Hello, Oscillate Sync here. It's Halloween, which means that by the rules of the YouTube algorithm, I am required to do a spooky video today. So what I thought I would do is I would get some kind of uh, creepy video and then maybe do a sound design soundtrack over the top of it. So I asked my uh, friend Mark, who's a video maker, whether he had some creepy footage just sort of lying around because he's the kind of guy that would he did he sent me uh, some stuff over and i cut it together into like two minutes of just sort of uneasy creepy kind of visuals so that left me with the question of what synth i was going to use to create the sounds and as it so happens i have just been sent this which is the stylophone gen x1 those of you familiar with the original style, if I might know it to be quite a basic synth, basically there's one sound and you play it with this little stylus, hence the name. But Dubrak, who now own the Stylophone brand, uh, brought out the Gen X1, which added some of the features that you might expect from a, a proper synth. So we've got a filter, we've got an LFO on here, we've got an envelope, and we've got a, a delay as well. So I thought it'd be really interesting to take the Gen X1 and use it as the sole sound source for this creepy soundtrack. Um, although I will also bring in the uh, Polara reverb, which is just out of shot up there, uh, because, you know, you need reverb. You always need reverb. Okay, so I think the place where I'll start for this track is to give it an underlying sense of dread. And I think the best way to create an underlying sense of dread is a good, solid drone sound. So um, the first thing we'll need to do is tune this down. So we have only got um, this range here on the keyboard. We also have this ribbon controller which allows us to do sort of pure glissando type stuff, which I will come back to later, I think, for some other parts. So the first thing we want to do is on the back of the unit, just here, there is a tuning control. Um, so just bear with me a moment uh, while I tune it. So I've just got a tuner on up on my computer screen. Through the uh, magic of editing, this will probably not take very long at all. Close enough for jazz. So now I've done that, um, that's some extra low end, but not enough yet. So I'm just going to come on to the underside here. I don't know whether it will focus. There we go. I think that's got it. Um, we've got these three buttons. So we've got minus one, minus two. So those are our sub octaves, one octave down, two octave down. Uh, so let's start by introducing the one octave down there to give us a little bit more um, low end doom. Oh, wrong way around. Immediately more doomful. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to turn on here is the one that's marked X. The one that's marked X enables pulse width modulation, which will uh, please the great Nick Bat and also make everything sound better because it always does. Nice. Uh, the other thing I think that is good with a drone uh, is to introduce some kind of slow pitch wobble, not very much, just enough to make it feel a little bit uneasy. Uh, so if we go over to the LFO, by default this is going to control the pitch. Uh, I want it on the triangle wave for smooth for vibrato. And we can turn up the depth. Maybe drop the rate a little bit as well. Okay, so that's um, starting to feel a little bit doomful, uh, but it's too bright at the moment, so let's use our filter to take that down a little bit. We can also increase the resonance. Let's give it an extra bit of mid-range. The resonance on this actually gets pretty screamy if you want it to. You can already hear it's kind of almost oscillating this. Uh, but you do need to be careful that it doesn't rob too much bottom end. Uh, okay, so that's sounding somewhere decent, I think. Um, but let's also turn on the delay 
to create extra drone movement. And that's sounding pretty cool now. And what I'll do during the performance, if you like, is that I can be tweaking the filter. And also the feedback level on the delay, because this delay will go into self-oscillation, so we can create sort of clattering... ...menace. Which we can then just back off just by bringing that feedback back. And then I think the finishing touch here, the seasoning on top, I think, if I reach across, and I'll turn on my Polara Reverb, uh, which is on a hall setting, and this will do two things. One, obviously, uh, you'll get that sort of long, drawn-out reverb, but the other thing it will do is it will widen the sound as well, because it's stereo reverb, which will leave us with something like this. I think sounds rather good. And I think what I'll do is maybe double track two of these for double doom purposes. Okay, so next thing, I want to lean into the fact that the Stylophone is delightfully cheesy when it wants to be. So I thought what I'd try and do is create kind of a faux theremin kind of sound, give it kind of that B-movie kind of vibe. There's nothing spookier than a theremin, I reckon. So to play, in commas, in quotes rather, the theremin, what we're going to use is this strip here, which gives us kind of like a full... Uh, glidable playing surface because otherwise we're not going to be able to do kind of glissando type stuff um, on the main keyboard which is fine so let's get our theremin happening so the first thing is it's a little bit bright so let's just bring that down a little bit and the other thing when we come to actually play it we can use the filter to get that kind of um, fading in kind of thing that you can do with a theremin uh, that we can't do so easily here. Uh, so next thing, let's fake up some vibrato because with the theremin you're constantly kind of giving it that sort of wobble, uh, which is kind of part of the signature sound. So let's bring in the uh, LFO. This one probably went a bit faster. Uh, so again on the triangle mode. Faster than that. Push the depth as far as we can without it sounding seasick. Probably about there. Uh, let's bring in the delay again, because you know it's there, why wouldn't you? Uh, maybe go for like a shorter, kind of slapbacky type thing this time. Less feedback, maybe. Less level, a little bit more feedback. something like that and let's bring in some reverb again i think this time maybe a spring sound might be nice sort of lean into that kind of vintage vibe so i've set the spring algorithm on the polara
so what I think I want next is kind of like a pulsing bass, just maybe like even if it's just one note, dong, 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 just to kind of bring it in partway through the track to kind of add to the building menace as the track builds up. Uh, so um, I'm tuned back up, but what we'll do is um, we'll turn on both the one octave down and the two octave down as well. And we'll put on the pulse width modulation for good measure as well. So that's our kind of our starting point. Uh, and we'll darken that down because this is a bass. And then we'll come over to the envelope. The envelope by default is going to affect the um, filter. So if we just bring up the decay a little bit. Maybe down there. Quite a cool kind of classic bass sound. Uh, so I was thinking rather than actually having to play a pulse tong tong tong, what if we just get the delay to do it? So let's slap that delay on and we'll just crank the delay time. Bring up the level. Yeah, the delay is not pristine. Maybe we'll play it like that. Just try tweaking the feedback so we're getting four pulses and then I'll replay it each time hold it down let it build up uh, and let's give it some reverb as well just to keep with the theme I think maybe the plate algorithm this time it'd be nice if the delay went slightly longer but it is what it is I think And we can probably affect the filter manually as the track progresses. I think that'll do very nicely indeed. Okay, I think we're on the home straight here, but uh, I want to introduce a couple of other kind of effecty kind of things just to um, bring about a great sense of unease in the listener. And I think probably one way that we can create unease is by using kind of vibrato and sort of out of tune -y kind of sounds. And we'll just kind of sweep them in and out, weave them into the track, I think. So um, we're back at our kind of... Oh, there's already some Ferrato going on there. Kind of our bass line track here. Um, well, let's bring about some Ferrato. Let's go fairly deep. I think probably also maybe... We played them on there maybe a little bit. Anyway, that's way too bright at the moment, so let's darken that down. Let's also use the envelope. If we crank the attack and decay, we'll get a natural filter sweep because the envelope is uh, normal to the filter.
and give it some delay. Maybe a bit more resonance. Wider depth, I think. Darker and more resonance, perhaps. Something like that. And let's give it a little bit of reverb. Maybe a room reverb this time. Okay, so I think I want to create one more kind of effect, and that is kind of the effect of skin crawling. So I'm thinking kind of like a something creepy crawly. Um, and I think the way I'm going to do this is by using the square wave on the LFO, do it quite fast and maybe adjust the rate to play and just kind of drag a sound down here. I've uh, tuned it up really, really high because I figure Creepy crawly things are high pitched. Don't know. Uh, I might adjust the tuning because that's really high up at the top there, isn't it? Too high. Still probably too high. Yeah, something like that. Okay. So let's uh, bring the rate up fairly high on the LFO and the depth up fairly high. And actually, I'll have the pulse width modulation on just because I haven't for a while. Uh, okay, probably faster than that. That's way too bright, so let's just bring the filter down. So I'm thinking something like that. But that sounds not great at this point. I think I probably need some delay. Um, kind of has almost like a metallic sound to it. So I think something like that, uh, maybe with a short delay time. Ah. Maybe we need to be tweaking that delay time and getting those kind of pitch bendy things happening. So tweaking the rate and the delay time, I think, there. And let's come full circle and I'll put a hall reverb on that, perhaps. Yes, I think that'll do very nicely. I hope you found that interesting and enjoyable and a little bit spooky as well. If you did, make sure you hit the old thumbs up button and make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming synth 
fun on the channel and also make sure you check out the finished video uh, which will be linked in the description and also probably the thing will pop up there if I remember to do it. Um, you'll find it on the channel anyway. Uh, thank you to Dubrek for sending this over for me to have a play with. I've had good fun with it. If you have any questions of course you can just drop me a line in the comments below. Uh, and other than that, thank you so much for joining me as always. Take care and I'll see you again soon.